Hey friends, welcome back to Band Practice. I'm Emma. And I'm Madison. And today we're going to be doing an episode all about finances because clearly we're the most financially responsible people ever. Mm -hmm. And you guys should take a whole podcast episode worth of advice from us, obviously. <laughs> Literally like every episode of ours is like about consumption in some way or mm -hmm. another. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to like talk about how we've changed as women and now we are um, probably like the wisest mid 20 year old women that like, have ever existed. And so we really want to do something good for everyone and spread the good news and the good word. Mm -hmm. We're basically millionaires at this point and we just want to, you know, we want you guys to be millionaires too. So here's a little yeah, guidebook. Basically, we started um, spending less money for the last one week. Seven days. And and we just have so much to share. So, yep, that's what we're talking about today. Yeah. I think we briefly mentioned it in last week's episode that we were doing yeah. like a low spend challenge. And since then, we've both posted about it on TikTok and stuff. Um, but we thought we'd make a whole episode about it, dive into our rules, our motivations, what we've learned. Um, and just like financial stuff in general, because I feel like finances in your 20s or even like just financial transparency in your 20s isn't mm -hmm. really a big thing in a lot of spaces like career or like people making money on the Internet. Like they'll make these big claims and you're like, how how do these people have all this money? How are you making all this money? And then like nobody really has the answers. You know what I mean? Right. Because people just don't really talk about how much money they make or where they spend it. So we're here today to talk about money. Yes, we are. We're here to be vulnerable. Hopefully you can relate to some of this because like you were saying, like it's just not something that a lot of people are ready to talk about because I think we're afraid that we are experiencing the most like more financial trouble than everyone else around us. And like there's almost like shame around it. But really we're all struggling and we're just none of us are talking about it. Mm -hmm. Um and by talking about it, we can kind of like pick up tips here and there from each other and just like all hopefully become healthier people when it comes to spending and saving. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like it helps to just even see people like Emma showed me this girl a while ago that actually lives in Denver. Her name is Lexi Larson or something, right? I think so. Yeah. Lexi Larson on TikTok. And she has like half a million followers or something crazy. And she has like a good big girl job and she makes videos breaking down her paycheck and like how she spends it and what's left over in her bank account and like mm -hmm. I just watched one I think yesterday or something and she literally had like $76 left over after everything and I'm like <laughs> wow because if she didn't make those videos you would think she'd be balling yeah you know yeah and so it's just crazy it's so real um I guess we could get it oh wait no we haven't even done it anything. oh yeah we haven't well wow, we really <laughs> just got so we got so excited about money. I know. I really was um, going to say, like, let's dive into the episode. No, we have things to cover. We have things to we cover. We sure do. That was just a little taste, a little teaser. Yeah. Uh, how have you been? Oh, um, I'm not doing great today. I PMS really badly, like physically and mentally, like I was almost throwing up. And then I was crying for like the last hour and a half before this. Just, mm -hmm. you know realizing things, blaming myself for being cheated on, just like stuff like oh. that. Um, <laughs> Bomb drop. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, it's been a really good day, but uh, before, I had a good week last week. <laughs> <laughs> we can do like highs and lows. Like that was your low. Now give us your high. Thank you. Because you said last yeah, week was low. Good. Hmm, hard to choose. I mean, seeing the Ares movie was just so fun. True. I can't I wait say that for like it to I be went. on like a streaming service. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yes, it was fun. I'm like, it was so much fun. I can't wait <laughs> to be able to like watch it before bed, you know? I'll mm -hmm. probably just like watch it until I'm just so sick of it, but it'll probably take like 100 views. So yeah, but I highly recommend. I mean, very like it, it's crazy how she's like allowed to price a movie more <laughs> than like a normal movie ticket price. That's, That's still wild. in a normal movie theater um but i paid it and it's gonna take a lot of strength for me to not pay that multiple times this week but in the spirit of saving i've realized i only need to see a movie once in theaters mm -hmm. i'd say that's fair so that's fair yeah <laughs> yeah 
worked, but I'm glad it was a good time. Was there anything like um extra like was it just more money just because or was there anything like special about the experience? Like did like you the get to take anything home or like No. No. Okay. I got to buy a themed cocktail. Okay. You got the opportunity to purchase one? Mm-hmm. Nice. And you could buy like <laughs> popcorn buckets, drink cups, special bracelets, but I was like, I'm I don't need all of that stuff. But I will say, like, granted, like another cash grab, sure, but also it's really cool that everyone is able to like experience the tour because obviously it was so hard to get tickets and like a lot of tickets were very, very expensive. So it is cool that she found a way to like make the experience more accessible too. A wider audience so respect for that yeah that's so fun everybody should yeah. do that like that's i want to see concerts in theater like it that's was, so yeah. fun right i that's thought like, it was a lot of fun that's how i felt about the um one direction this is us movie back in the day mm -hmm. where they had like the shots of them on stage like the full song yeah. performance oh it was so good felt like you were really there yeah you know i want to hear your highs and lows Ooh. um Okay, well, my high was today, actually, in contrast. But my next door neighbor got a mini dachshund puppy. And it's like the same. It's a long hair red mini dachshund, which is exactly what Indy is. And um, it's eight weeks old. So tiny. So cute. Mm -hmm. And I think she got like kind of overwhelmed with the stress of having a puppy. And she like didn't have anybody, didn't have anybody to watch him today while she went to work. So I was like, girl like I can watch them like I have a puppy too they can just be puppies together so I puppy sat today and I was a little stressed about it but it actually turned out so good they got along like really good and they were just adorable together like they would nap all cuddled up and it was just like the sweetest thing and it made me really want Indy to have a little brother because they were just so cute together yeah, from what I could see, he was a really good, like, big brother boy. He was, yeah. He'd give, like, they shared toys. Like, he didn't get, like, possessive over anything. Or even if the puppy was, like, cuddling me, I thought that Indy might, like, scooch him yeah. over and be like, this is my mom. But he was so good. <laughs> He'd just, like, find another spot and lay there. He was a really sweet big brother. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess something might something might have to happen something soon. Something might need to be in the works. It was like baby fever, but like times 400. Like I mm -hmm. actually need a puppy. It was so cute. Um, And my low, I don't even remember what happened last week. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess my low, not even that it's like an event in particular, but was just like the realization surrounding this challenge that like you really – have to spend money to enjoy life and that's like so messed up because mm -hmm. anytime I would like do something with a friend or like go out and like go on a date night or just like get good food everything costs money so I'm like ha I guess I had a hard time for a little bit finding a balance of like enjoying life within this challenge because it was just a realization that like damn you really got to spend money to have fun mm-hmm but yeah. we're finding balance and yeah that's not true you can have fun in many different ways but it just felt like that for a minute it did and it's hard like like going out and socializing and it's hard to not get caught up in the moment and like like I did yesterday and I like got a bunch of drinks and well not like a bunch but like <laughs> I just felt like there were moments that I could have just like not gotten another drink or like not bought this not bought that like there's still ways to go out and enjoy myself or like buy a meal without like doing the the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. But it's almost so ingrained in socializing. Like we got dinner with our friends the other night and I got dinner, of course, but I didn't get any mm -hmm. drinks because I was like, okay, well, that's like a good compromise. I'm still socializing yeah. and like eating, but I don't have to get drinks if I don't really want them. So I didn't get one. And then um, some of them were like, oh, wait, you didn't get a drink? They were like, where's yours? And I was like, oh, I didn't get one. And they were like, why not? Like, not even in like a why yeah. aren't you drinking kind of way, but they were like, oh, why not? And I was like, I don't even want to explain this challenge. I was like, I just don't want one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it's exactly. like most people don't even think twice about it. And mm -hmm. me too, before this challenge, I would just get a drink, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's weird. It's really taught me the value of a dollar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of same because... It's humbling. I've been vlogging every day on TikTok. So like really 
I have to confess to all my sins every day. Yeah. And there's been a couple days where I'm like, oh, I did all right. But then you add it up. And between like grocery shopping, getting coffee and like doing an activity, mm-hmm. that's like a hundred dollars. It goes fast. Yep. Yeah. So a hundred dollars is the new twenty dollars. That's what they it's say. sickening. It's sickening. Disgusting. I but remember that that same sentiment does not apply to what we are being paid. So yeah. I'll say that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it does not. Does not. Imagine making like a hundred dollars an hour. That'd be nice. That would Instead be of crazy. twenty. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. yeah. Other than like um the world being bombed, like that was probably a low, but <laughs> we won't even get into that. No. Um I I wow. <laughs> I don't even know guess, what to say. I guess we got uh, yeah, it is actually just heart wrenching and devastating what's going on in the mm-hmm. world right now. Yeah, so if I can't spend $100, so, I guess it's not that big of a deal because, like, right. my hospitals aren't being burned down or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, mm. what are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> since I don't feel well, I literally just have water mm. um, with a little splash of lemonade Mio. That's my new Mio flavor these days. Yum. We're, like, mm-hmm. syncing up. It's weird. I'm having a green tea lemonade, which Ooh. is basically oh. the same thing but with green tea. It's delicious. It's my new drink. Oh, you made it on TikTok, no? Mm-hmm. I was I like, think I did, yeah. Mm, where did I see this? Mm-hmm. Deja vu. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I I think you said this actually not long ago that like coffee or like super milky drinks aren't sounding that good. Yeah. And sometimes I just want like something refreshing and light. Yeah. And like even like a tea, like a chai or a matcha, like that's still kind of milky and like mm-hmm. heavy. Like rich. Yeah. But um, I just got like a thing of a big thing of green tea and lemonade from Trader Joe's. I've been having one like every day. Yum. Squeeze a little fresh lemon in there. It's delicious. Ooh. Hydrating. I cannot get over how big my forehead looks right now. Oh my god. <laughs> just thought I needed to say it. Like the way my uh, overhead light is reflecting off of it is just like crazy. <laughs> I really hope no one's actually watching this episode and they're just simply listening. Imagine it like goes viral on YouTube exclusively. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess should we now get into it? Yeah, let's just jump in. Okay, so we kind of split this up to try to organize our thoughts a little bit because this is just like a chatty episode. So we're going to explain like our motivations for starting the challenge, our rules for the challenge, how it's going, and then things that we've learned or like things that we're going to continue after the 25 day challenge. So I guess we'll start with you because you kind of were the instigator in this. So what was your what was your motivation? So I guess <laughs> I've like always had money issues. Um, I'm like, where do I start? No, but I think money was always something I was like stressed about. Like growing up, I my family wasn't very well off. I mean, I have always been like someone that's like thinking about money. And then when I got my big girl job um, and I've like been making decent money, I just like really am relishing in that <laughs> and like was spending all of it. And just like coming up on like having worked there for a year, I realized like I haven't actually saved mm-hmm. literally anything. I've not saved a dime, almost living beyond my means. And I would budget myself like really heavily. Like I would say like I could have $500 to spend each week. And somehow I would still get through all of that and start like like digging into next week's or just like, okay, I'll just put it on like my credit card. And then it's like my credit card currently I think has like a thousand dollars on it, which isn't that bad in the grand scheme of things. Like, and I know that I could like pay that off in a month if I tried to, but instead Mm -hmm. I just like am paying off like the same couple hundred dollars each month that like I reaccumulate. And I just realized like I'm kind of thinking about someday after my current lease maybe living on my own and I was like I don't this is not like the behaviors of someone that can like financially live on their own like when you do the calculations with my salary and everything it's totally possible but like with my current habits it would be a really dumb decision but it's Mm -hmm. still something that I am kind of like wanting for myself so I've just decided that I wanted to like I don't know build better habits and grow my savings because I don't know it's so weird because I think savings is such an odd topic for our age group like people either have nothing 
or they have like somehow they have like 20k Mm -hmm. and it's like wait how like how I don't understand (laughs) where'd that come from (laughs) can you like break it down break it break down the equation for me because like I don't get it um but I'd love to be like the latter that would be super sick oh another thing that I thought of that like I'm so sorry my brain is like insane but I realized today like wow I like escaped like the whole like oh she got married young like babe I if I get married tomorrow it's not getting married young it's getting married at a normal time so I realized I was like wow I'll probably get married soon someday like hopefully within like the next five years would be sick and I don't want to bring my poor spending habits to a marriage and freak out my future husband so decided it's time to get my act together yeah some preventative measures (laughs) yeah yeah um I also want to just I forget what you even said that reminded me of it but I wanted to touch on we are obviously manifestation girlies and oftentimes like abundance mindset doesn't go really hand in hand with budgeting or a lot of Mm. people don't seem to think that they do and I I don't know it is like a weird territory because I do feel like doing like a low spend type of thing or like trying to save money or hold on to it for whatever reason kind of does like get in the way of an abundance mindset. But I like what you said about like building better habits and like looking towards your future so that your future can be abundant, you know, and like setting the groundwork now in like Mm -hmm. a positive light instead of a negative light of like, I don't have enough. And so like, that's why I have to save because like I need to somehow you know, save more money and have more money. It's more so like looking ahead and being like, I want to be able to live in a different way in the future. And so like, I'm just going to make little changes now to help with that. And kind of like on that train, but kind of different. I feel like, and not to sound like the vibrations of the universe, but it's like, (laughs) it's almost like a little low vibrational (laughs) to like buy everything that you see on TikTok or whatever like just like buy everything to just have like a bunch of stuff it almost like drags you down and makes you feel worse in a way I think it's actually like really important to be intentional with it and then I think it makes it more special when you do buy something for yourself it's like you actually value it and like you treasure it and like you take care of it because you don't have all of this like excess stuff like say buying makeup or something like Mm -hmm. I find myself buying like a bunch (laughs) of just makeup that like I use I use all of my makeup and like I do Mm -hmm. like it all but just like oh I want to try this because it's like a different formula or like a slightly different shade and it's like baby already have concealer and blush like why do you need one with a slightly different formula but then I feel like now with this challenge, I've like seen things that I do want to buy and then I'll write them down on like my notes. And then at the end of the challenge, if I do still want to buy them or try them out, then I will. But then I feel like mm-hmm. because I thought about it and like I've been thinking about it and I want it and then I end up buying it for myself. It's like a much more intentional and like high vibrational experience. You know what I mean? That's so real. No, I know exactly what you mean. And going off of that, like in the future when we are you know, rolling in it, like, (laughs) I want to, (laughs) like, I would want to be the kind of person that, like, spends my money, I don't know how to explain, almost, like, with kindness and, like, intentionality and to not let it, like, consume me and, like, rule my life and rule my decisions. And I think I can start building that mindset now. Yeah. And I feel like even even though this challenge has only been a week, I feel Literally. like <laughs> <laughs> we're at, oh god, we're we're sick. <laughs> we're like we're in our we're in a whole new like, era. We're changed women. In December, we're gonna be back on our BS of oh, just yeah. disgusting overconsumption of Sephora. Mm-hmm. But I feel like while we're being intentional about it <laughs> throughout this challenge, I feel like both of us I've noticed have spent. We have spent money, but we spent mm-hmm. it on experiences or like social interactions. I don't think either of us have bought any like clothes or makeup or anything, right? No, nothing. No, nothing unnecessary. But the money that we have spent, like you saw the Aeros tour, like you went out to brunch, I think yesterday or something with your friends. And mm-hmm. like I've been to dinner or I've been on like a date with Ben. Like those are things that I'm totally okay with spending money on. And like yeah. I think it actually does add value to your life rather than like 
drag you down like we were talking about with just like uh like the one thousand dollar sephora hauls that you see on tiktok like it's just a bit Mm -hmm. much personally i think (laughs) yeah and going off of that again (laughs) (laughs) like bringing that back to my last point like i'd rather save the money from buying like material items now and then like down the road say like a trip comes up with like friends and everything like i'll have money set aside like already saved that i won't feel guilty about using because i've been smart with my money and like i feel like i've earned the like ability to treat myself to something really nice and memorable yeah that's so true that's a really good point well, I think we can wrap that little section up mm-hmm. <laughs> before we keep tie it with a bow, bouncing around. Yeah, um, <laughs> and we can get into the the rules of the challenge. Okay, so the rules that we came up with are kind of based on the things that were most tempting to us, or the things that we found we would spend the most money on or felt like guilty about. So the first was no non essential shopping. That means no Sephora, no Target, unless it's just like groceries or toiletries. Just like no clothes, no makeup, no skincare, nothing that we don't need, Mm -hmm. basically. Um, No food delivery, which is a big one for me because I have spent an an embarrassing amount on Uber Eats. Like that that hoe had to go. (laughs) Um, Minimal eating out. Um, We said that like socially eating out is okay. Like if you're going somewhere with your friends or like if Madison was doing a date night. Um, But like to go grab food if you're by yourself, like grabbing like fast food or like, I don't know, getting takeout somewhere is just like not necessary Mm -hmm. and would have just added extra money. So we wanted to try to like, we created that rule to encourage us to make more food at home. Uh, The next one is minimal coffee out, which is another big temptation for us. Um, We stuck to only two coffees a week um, as like our max that we can buy. And then uh, minimal activities that cost money to like once a week. So like for me, going to the movies would be like a money activity or I don't know, something like that. So just trying to limit that as well. Yeah. And if you guys want to do a challenge like this, like your rules are going to be different. These are very mm-hmm. catered towards us and also like the the um, exceptions that we made. Like if you don't get coffee all the day, then two times a week for coffee would be like frivolous for you but for us it's like right we were getting coffee like five times a week so two times a week is like a good compromise um we tried to make it like hard enough to where obviously it's a challenge and it's going to be different Mm -hmm. from our normal life but not so hard that like we literally can't leave the house yeah or like we're setting us ourselves up to fail yeah because we're we're not we're doing too much like too much change you know yeah i think this is like a good um challenge for us but also leaves room for like enjoyment Mm -hmm. i'm very happy with how it's gone so far same yeah and how it's felt i think we found like a good balance um should we get into how it's how it's been so far in the yeah seven days that we've done this or whatever day we're on nine (laughs) i think we're actually up to i think this was our 10th day let's not sell ourselves short (laughs) (laughs) yeah do you want to kick it off sure sure um okay so my first week, I spent $253. That was including, honestly, I think half of it was groceries because I went to the grocery mm-hmm. store and it was like $120 or something, mm-hmm. Yeah, which that'll get you. But I'm shopping for two people and like, you got to eat. No, like, what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, I should have broken it down into like essential spend and non-essential mm, spend categories. Yeah. You can check out my TikTok if you want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> check out our TikToks to see what we really spent money on. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll have a full breakdown there. Um, but I haven't bought, like we said, any clothes, makeup, skincare, anything like unessential. Um, my weak spot or like where I've spent the most non-essential money has been eating out, which honestly was like a big surprise for me because I don't feel like I eat out that much. Mm-hmm. Like I never really eat out out of convenience, like fast food or like grab something on the way home from work. Right. I'm pretty good about cooking meals at home because it, I actually enjoy cooking. Um, but this week I did go out a couple times with friends and Ben and it just adds up so quick. I'm like, mm-hmm. when did this get so expensive? Like, why are we spending like, like we went to breakfast the other day and it was like $60 for breakfast. I know. I'm like, oh. Okay. Um, so that, I guess, 
kind of opened my eyes because like I realized that eating out actually is extremely expensive and like it's something to be mindful of and it is like a treat. It should be a treat, right? Yeah. The other thing that I spent money on was I went out to get coffee once this week, which that is a win, first of all, because Mm -hmm. I used to be a hoe for a coffee out. Like I love my coffee shops. I love a little Starbucks. Like it's just my fun little activity. But I was finding that, like, I would have the urge to go get something or, like, stop by on the way home from work, and I didn't even really want it. Like, I, it wouldn't add anything to my day, like, to not get a coffee. And plus, I already make a coffee at home every day. Like, you're fine. Um, But I did get one for a little treat. So that was fun. And then I also um, got drinks one night with Ben. And so that was a little bit of money. But I mean, that's, I think that's fine. That's a good balance. Like once a week. Yeah. It's fine. Overall, could have I spent less money? Probably. But could have I spent less money and still had a good week and had fun and been social? Right. Probably not. So I'm pretty happy with how the first week week went, actually, because I feel like I was much more intentional. I spent much less money than I would have if I wasn't doing this challenge. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I just did a pretty good job, especially because I balanced it out with a couple zero dollar days, which is crazy. It was impressive. Um, Yeah. So even though like some days I spent like $70 or something, which sounds like a lot for the next two days, I'd spend like zero dollars and then it kind Mm -hmm. of just evened itself out. So I think it went well. Uh, Yeah, I I think you're spending, I mean, because I've been able to like really keep up with it on your TikTok. Like I've been so impressed and like inspired by you. Like you getting a bunch of zero dollar days pushed me to get a zero dollar day last week. Because I was like, I want to, I was like, I want to do it. Shoot. Mm -hmm. I'm having another zero dollar day today as well. But that's because I didn't leave the house. I know. I think I don't, I didn't spend any money today, but Ben filled up my gas tank yesterday, but it's my car. So I'll count it. But I didn't know that he filled it up yesterday until today. But uh, again, it's gas. You got to drive. can't control him. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, today I haven't spent any money. But I worked. So I find that it's not hard to not spend money if you're busy. <laughs> like mm-hmm. the weekends when <laughs> True. I'm not doing anything and I like can go do stuff, then I spend money. But like if you're a working gal and you don't stop and get a coffee or food, it's like you're really not going to spend that much money. Um. My first week also went very well. I spent two hundred and twenty-eight dollars, um, which, in the grand scheme of things, is great because, like I said earlier, I used to budget like five hundred dollars a week for myself, and I spent less than half of that. So I've really taught myself that like <laughs> spending that much is is not necessary, and it's not like normal. Um, <laughs> I have not bought anything unnecessary. The only like non-food thing I bought was maybe deodorant and a nail file but like I needed that to not stink so yeah my weak spot was also eating out and activities like going to the movies to see the Eras tour was 45 bucks um like that was uh the movie ticket was 25 and then 20 dollars on like snacks and a drink and then yesterday Sunday I did like Sunday fun day so I went to brunch I went to like a son's open practice and that was actually free but like going to something like that, you end up getting a drink or like you get snacks and like that stuff's always really expensive. So that ended up being an expensive day. But it just showed me like, like you said, like I could have spent less. Like we went to one other bar before the event and grabbed another drink. And like I didn't need to do that because one, I just don't really, I'm not a big drinker anyways. And mm-hmm. it turned out to be like $17. Like that's just ridiculous. Um, But, you know, like that's what we're, why we're doing this to like live and learn. Um, but yeah, I could have could have done it cheaper, but I don't regret like going out any of the times that I did. Yeah, I think that's um, the big thing because if I spent money like fifty bucks on I don't know a shirt that like mm-hmm. it's just gonna be another shirt in my closet. Sometimes I might regret it a little bit, but I never like yeah. regret going out to eat or like going to the movies. Like I would never totally. look back on that and be like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Yeah, that'd be yeah. silly. I love going to the movies. I do think that'll be like a big thing for me. And my therapist thinks that I should do something for myself on Fridays because that tends to be a really difficult mental health day. 
Um, so I might end up doing like taking myself to like a matinee on Fridays. I'm kind of excited. Fun. That's so um, cute. Yeah. And I can make it really cheap. Ugh. Never mind. I'm I was gonna <laughs> complain to you all. Like the one thing I wish my ex had given me was my damn Harkins movies cups. Ooh. I know they're just sitting in his cupboard, like untouched, and I'm just like, you MFR. Yeah, like, he has no use it's for too them. Late in the no, and it's too late in the year, really. Like I could probably buy a cup, but like I'm gonna have to buy a new one in two months. So mm. I'm just, uh, anyways, just <laughs> ignore me. Um, <laughs> We're like, and if you're I, listening, we would like yeah, those cups. And if you're listening, <laughs> just like secretly drop it off on my doorstep. And we won't have a problem. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so I'm also proud of how much I ate at home because that was a big thing for me. I really struggled with it. Like I do actually enjoy cooking. I don't. I'm not bad at it, but I just wouldn't put the effort into doing it. So I'm proud of myself for doing that. It's been, it's actually made things easier. Like before, I think I was really controlled by like, oh, what am I craving? Like, because I would let myself eat whatever I wanted. Like if I'm craving kava, I'm going to go get kava. Like, but like there's almost too many options when you Mm -hmm. do that. Whereas if I'm just eating what I have at home, I'm just having whatever I can make. And like, that's that that's so true this lifestyle is like so much less stressful i think it really eliminate the option to do things (laughs) it's so freeing in a weird way the minimalists were onto something with their philosophy (laughs) they they get it and i'm finally starting to understand yeah (laughs) um it's also been healthier because it's this has completely eliminated me eating fast food really because if I'm going to eat socially with someone, I'm probably not going to get Taco Bell. So, yeah, it's been great. Um, I think that's it. But, yeah, I've really been loving the challenge so far. And I'm, like, excited to do it each day to, like, challenge myself and see what I can what it, what I can whip up at home or how I can, like, pinch my pennies. Mm-hmm. I know. It kind of is – I thought I'd like not have that much fun doing it because it doesn't sound that fun. But I think Emma and I both have like the personality where if we make something into like a game or like Mm -hmm. a little bit of a competition, then it's fun. And so we have like a shared Google Doc for this whole challenge where we like put how much we spent each day and then we can like keep up with each other. The added layer of like doing it with a friend is fun, but then it makes it even more fun if you like actually check in with each other every day and and hold each Mm -hmm. other accountable. Yeah, I think the key for it really has been having an accountability partner. Otherwise, I would have like cheated myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And I took it the extra mile by posting on TikTok because now if I were to like give up or like buy clothes or something, I would be embarrassed. And then I'd have to be publicly embarrassed because I'd have to Mm -hmm. post it. And yeah, it's really kept me in check because at the end of the day, I want it to be a zero dollar day because it's just more fun that way feels good totally um okay so that's everything that's gone on so far we're looking forward to the end of this challenge we have i guess only like 15 days left um so it's a short challenge we just did it for the the month um but i guess we want to talk about things that we're gonna take with us or continue doing after the challenge is over um Mm -hmm. so things that have stuck out to me not getting coffee i've already talked about this but It's just really an unnecessary expense that has gotten so expensive. Like Emma got a coffee the other day and I asked, or I think you told me how much it was, or I asked you how much it was Mm -hmm. for TikTok or whatever. And it was $9. I'm like, yeah, girl, what? This is, this is the world that we live in. Like, and I would have just spent that five times a week. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's the price of coffee. So that's what I have to pay. But it's like, you really don't have to be doing all that. Like you can just make coffee mm-hmm. at home i do enjoy getting coffee and stuff so i think like the two times a week has been good i'll probably try to keep yeah. up with like two or under a week just because anything more than that is really just like not necessary i think for me um no food delivery is something i'm really gonna stick to or at least like always keeping that app deleted because it's just like not necessary i can understand maybe one night after going out with your friends or something, you get home and you guys want to like order pizza or something. But like in the morning, if I'm like me Uber eating a smoothie <laughs> is crazy. Like that's nuts. Like 
that's embarrassing actually to admit um so i would really like to not do that and like if you really want to eat something out you can go get it like if you want it that bad you can go and get it (sighs) sorry i get upset with myself about this i never wanted to be the girl that got like addicted to to the food delivery but i did yeah it's a slippery slope i like have never Mm -hmm. been super into it but i have there's like periods in my life where i use it more than others and then finally i just like this is so dumb like we all survived without this for like the majority of our life like food i feel Mm -hmm. like food delivery was not a thing like five years ago like you could order pizza but you couldn't like go on uber eats and get whatever you wanted so i'm like "Eh, it's fine i'll survive without it and then i didn't really do it but it is like it is a slippery slope because the convenience is almost too convenient like Mm -hmm. it's so easy to just order literally whatever you want to your house that's like the same thing with like Amazon though. Like Amazon, the convenience is just too much. And with these influencers with their Amazon storefront storefronts, like you can just go through, scroll through, click anything you want and it's delivered to your mm-hmm. house the next day. Like what I really need to be deleting is Amazon because <laughs> yeah. what is what even is that? Like I <sighs> I'll go on to order like indie treats or something and then like I'll buy him a toy because it's like in the same category or like, you know, you always just add on extra Mm -hmm. stuff. It's like before Amazon, think of the world before Amazon. You really had to like go to specific websites to order stuff. It wasn't an all in one platform. So then you wouldn't order anything that you didn't really need because it was like inconvenient. It's crazy. Um, My next thing that I'm going to try to keep up is I mentioned this earlier and I think you actually mentioned this last episode where I got the idea from I stole it from you but um making a list like if you think oh I want to buy that or like oh I'm interested in that just Mm -hmm. have like kind of a running list in your notes app or if you keep like a journal I don't know if you're a pen and paper girl but I do it in my notes app just anytime I see like a link to something that I want to buy or like a new product that I want to buy or anything that's like not essential I've started just writing it down in my notes and then I think it's like just good practice to wait at least a week Maybe if it's like a big purchase, wait like a month and see if you still are really, really wanting it. And if yeah. the the desire has kind of died down, you probably don't really need it. But if you waited a week or a month and you're still like, no, I really would enjoy that and like I'd get my money's worth out of it, then you know that you should buy it or invest in it. And I think it just it kind of adds like a buffer to the instant gratification of being like, oh, I want that. Oh, I can just buy it. I can just order it. Mm-hmm. It just like kind of adds a good buffer for yourself to actually be more intentional and think about things before you just type in your credit card info. Right. (laughs) I also think it would be cute to do like make it a Pinterest board if you wanted, if you're like Mm. a visual person. So it's kind of like a little wish list. That's Um, so cute. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) I think our generation is very ruled by like instant gratification. So honestly, a lot of things you'd probably look back on like two weeks later and be like, I, I wanted it only in that moment. And like, that's it. But yeah, one of my lessons or things that I would want to continue was also making a list. And I think I'll need to set some sort of like shopping budget for the month to like limit myself. Otherwise, I know I'll probably get carried away. Um, so I'm just trying to like be honest with myself and I don't know, already thinking about like how I can make sure I don't get like sucked back in to the the lifestyle of like just being bored and going to Target and spending like hundred dollars. Like it's just not it's not cute. Mm-mm. It's not cute. It's not sustainable Mm-mm. in this economy. It's no, really yeah. not. Um, and my last thing, just to wrap it up, I feel like this is the whole vibe of the episode. We've said it multiple times, but I just want to be more intentional and actually think things through because I feel like I was kind of caught up in the the grand scheme of things where like you just always feel like you want something or always feel like you need something you're always looking for the next thing to purchase even if it's not intentional and I feel like I was kind of also trapped in the thought pattern of like oh if I had this then my wardrobe would be complete or if I had this then my makeup routine or my skincare routine would be complete and that is just like the dumbest logic I've ever heard because obviously Mm -hmm. it never ends it's a hamster wheel of like always wanting the next best thing 
but I found myself like being in that unintentionally. And so I think slowing down and thinking, (laughs) thinking things through or thinking things Mm -hmm. twice, um, it's just good practice. And like, that's obviously what financially smart people do. They don't just buy everything that they want the second that they want it. And I'm just trying to be more like that and less like Gen Z brain dead. I see it and then I buy Mm -hmm. it. And then that's like me every day just buying unnecessary things. It's just silly. That kind of goes with like my last point too. I just feel less stressed about money when I'm actually being wise with it. It's a crazy revelation. (laughs) Um, But like one, okay, saving money is kind of addicting. It's like, wait, this is fun. Like I want to see how much I can save. Like what's the lowest I can go with my spending every day, you know? Um, And I just feel like there's peace in being like content and like proud of your financial decisions or like your financial habits, like being stressed about how much you spend money or like how much shopping you're doing or like just thinking about like, oh, what am I going to buy next? Or like, what am I going to buy during this sale? (laughs) Me with the Sephora sale coming up. (laughs) Like it's actually really, life has been more enjoyable knowing I'm not stressed about that or like knowing that like I'm not overspending for the week and like I'm going to have extra money at the end of the week to put back into my savings that I didn't spend. Like it's just a lot more peaceful and I just feel better about myself and just like, it, it almost boosts your self-esteem to be like financially smart. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like a good point is that you just want to be proud of the way you spend money or like your choices because it really doesn't make you feel good about yourself to be like stupid with your money or like yeah, be regretful about things that you purchased. Like yeah. that's just not a fun feeling. So I feel like it's like you said, it boosts your self-esteem and like makes you feel good about yourself and like just makes you feel like a smarter more responsible young woman Mm -hmm. I would actually like to be able to speak about my finances with confidence yeah Yeah. (laughs) someday (laughs) at the end of these 25 days it'll be all different Um, how to be a billionaire in 25 days (laughs) we suddenly buy coffee (laughs) yeah we suddenly make like youtube shorts with our mics of like like the men Please. on here. If you want to be a billionaire, <laughs> stop going to Starbucks and in one month you will have enough money to buy a house. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. No, literally, if you want to be able to put a down payment on a home. Okay. I already fucking <laughs> on a home. <laughs> Please listen up. If you're interested in purchasing a home. <laughs> Like, there's actually something wrong with me. I cannot believe I am on a podcast. Like, I don't know how to speak English ever. Like, oh my god, that was that's funny. Like, like, I'm not even gonna finish my joke because I ruined it for myself. I just love whenever you mess up, you're so quick to say, Never mind. You say, How stop, never mind. <laughs> like, like, there's no coming back from it. <laughs> <laughs> even if we cut it out like you'll know sometimes yes. it's just yeah it's a mental block like, it would be embarrassing to know that like i had to do a second take <laughs> oh my god man that's too good that's a great way to wrap things up that is well that was it for today's episode hopefully i don't even want to say like hopefully you learned something because like I'm the last person to be giving advice, but hopefully you found maybe like comfort or like could relate to this in some way. And we're just like starting the dialogue and conversation about managing your finances in your 20s because it's it's a tricky business um, and we can all learn how to have better habits together. And if you want to stay up to date with us and specifically follow along on our spending challenge, you can follow both Madison and I on TikTok um, on our individual accounts, but we also have a band practice account as well as on Instagram and the our ads are linked in the show notes if you want to check us out. And of course, as usual, if you would like to stay up to date with our episodes, make sure to follow our podcast or subscribe and leave a rating and review if you are enjoying it so far. If you're if you're enjoying being in the band, which I hear a lot of people say, but I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the, the proof. results in our, I'm seeing, not seeing the proof in the pudding. So if y'all could get to work. <laughs> Clock in, like get, get to writing. I don't know what the holdup is, but don't text Seems it to like me. Nobody wants to work these days. Right. Like don't DM it. 
write it in the reviews. Yeah. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. Five stars. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> And that's all we have for today. Thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you next week. We love you. Bye. Love ya. Mwah.